this afternoon I wanted to just share some, I, I'm looking for the best way to say it because I, I just, I was just playing around with, with the idea of looking at culture, linking culture, sociology, sociological concept with, uh, with TVET. And I came up with this. I think I read something somewhere and this triggered the thought. So you will share with me this afternoon. So it's uh, innovation as disruption of culture, a TVET perspective. And so this is premised on the notion, what I'll be sharing is premised on the notion that TVET, by virtue of its function, how it, it, it operates, and, and its purpose, has an, in, an obligation to respond to the changing context of societies and the demands of the work world. This paper discusses innovation in TVET as a disruption of culture and makes the assumption that for innovation in TVET to take root in, edu in the education system, there must be changes in the current cultural practices of TVET. And so I'm not sure if you, you've ever thought of it as cultural practices, but we'll explore that together. So the purpose of the paper is to discuss why innovation in TVET is an imperative within the context of the 21st century. And then the paper goes on to examine the manifestations of culture, specifically rituals, tools, discourses, as a framework for assessing the disruption that must occur in TVET as we seek to develop a more innovative TVET practice. So we want to explore with some concepts and make sure we are on the same page. So the first one is innovation. What is that? And I'm going to draw on the work of UNESCO 2019 to, to give you the definition which says, and it's UNESCO UNIVOC. And it describes innovation in two ways. First, as a broad concept used to describe new and improved products. And I was so happy to see that um, the improved, because very often we tend to think that innovation is brand new. But it's the new and improved products, services, processes, and practices that differ significantly from previous experiences. That's definition one. Definition two says, uh, TVET innovation, specifically, comprises substantial changes in the way TVET is practiced by an institution, making it progressively more relevant to its economic, social, and environmental context. For the purposes of this paper, innovation in TVET is defined by me as involving the introduction of new ideas, methods, technologies and practices to enhance the quality, relevance, and effectiveness of vocational education and training programs. Why is innovation important? That's a question we want to look at now. And particularly, it's not just important, but an imperative in the 21st century. And the question is why? And I'm certain if I had time for us to discuss that, we would hear a lot of reasons. So I'm only going to talk about five here, or identify five. First is to prepare a future-ready workforce. Now, that's a big task, especially even today when we hear, oh, the workforce is not ready. And here, not for current, and I'm saying for future. But that's what innovation in TVET aims to do. And so if you're looking at future ready, then we have to deal with what we just heard a while ago, the whole influence of AI and other forms of technologies. But it's, it's about meeting the demands of industry and fostering a spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation. And very importantly, TVET innovation, the change is imperative as we seek to address global challenges. And one that comes to mind very clearly is the climate change issues. And there's a whole part of TVET that's called greening TVET, which seeks to address this issue. But very importantly is to encourage an innovation ecosystem. So TVET would no longer be looking at just pro providing work work-ready workers, but innovative workers. That's where we are pushing the boundary. Now, I am going to use a cultural framework, 
within which to assess or to, to if, um, uh, well, let's use assess the, the, the practices of TVET. And so I think we need to look at what's the meaning of culture. So a critical thing about culture is that it's collective. So culture is a collective concept, which simply put refers to the way a group of people think, act, behave, how they interact. It speaks about shared knowledge of a group of people. It is values, which is at the core of culture, but it speaks about the norms, the beliefs, the kinds of meanings and customs that are held among, a members, among members of a group. So what we're talking about from a TVED perspective is the values, the norms, the beliefs, the meanings. Yesterday, right in this room, or maybe it was next door, we were left with a question, having looked at TVED teacher education versus non-TVED teacher, and it says, who is a TVET teacher? And so that would take us to talk about those beliefs and norms. But a culture speaks about behavior that is supported, expected, reinforced, and valued by a group of people over a long period. And for the purposes of this paper, the belief, its culture speaks to the beliefs, values, and ways of behaving that have come to define TVET over the period of its development as an arm of education. So I want you to think about that. What we'll be looking at is the beliefs, the cultures, the ways of doing things, the ways of behaving that, that makes us TVET. So for those of you who have done sociology, you will appreciate these, these, these manifestations, but here are five manifestations of culture because culture is one of those intangibles. And so you need to make it tangible, we make it tangible we, up through the discourses. We assess it through the cultural tools, the rituals, symbols, and heroes. And I am going to be focusing my analysis on the first three, discourses, cultural tools, and rituals. And so, Innovation as disruption of TVED culture. When we discuss that, we are talking about the disruption of the ideas, and so we speak to the new ideas, the new methods, the new technologies and behaviors that create a shift, a shift in the beliefs, the values and practices that have come to define TVET over the years. In, in the session, the, the, not the last session, the one before with, for UTEC, we were challenged about revisiting our philosophical perspective because of the influence of AI. And so here, here, this is corroborating some of those thoughts. So let's look at the analysis now. So we are going to do, look at innovation as disruption of TVET culture for, in terms of the discourses. How is the discourse going to shift? or is shifting. So the dominant philosophical base of TVET over the years from Adam Smith's time is pragmatism, all, all along. It's pragmatism. It is about being performance-based, competency-based, occupation-driven. When we talk about TVET, we are talking about a focus on one of the things I would always hear my, myself saying to my students is, is a focus on efficiency, doing it the best way, the most economic way to get things done. It talks about repetition, conditioning, um, and I won't give my judgment on anything, I'm just saying what was. Instrumental learning, activity-based, project-based, hands-on learning. And here is the shift that for some people it's taking place, in some regions it's, it's a, we are ahead, but we need to move in this direction as a disruption of this culture of pragmatism and, and, and begin to base our thoughts, philosophical grounding of TVET within the constructivist perspective. From that perspective, key to TVET is construction of authentic and purposeful learning. So it is not just about skills. 
Skills is one dimension. It has to be much more than that. It's the integration of academic and technical knowledge. But very important, as a, a, you, um, you know, I was wondering, why did she go back all the way to my diploma? But here it comes. When I was doing mechanical years ago and then worked in industry, the focus was on building my own personal skills. So everything is individual. Within this context, collaborative knowledge is important. And so working together as a team to solve real work problems, it must be a hallmark of the TVET classroom. That's part of the disruption. It's, it's students enabled to use the e-design process because the aim is to solve problems. This is one of the big differences that I see. As a TVET student myself, we are given a project. This is what you are to build at the end to show that you understand. In the new TVET, I am given a problem to solve. And then I build whatever that is to solve the problem, to show how I'm using those things at the bottom here now, critically analyzing the existing outcomes to create innovative solutions. The ability to transfer knowledge across disciplines in order to solve problems. And here is where we have the whole thing of the STEM capability coming in, the digital literacy, the analytical thinking. That is the TVET person of today. It can't be just the hands, the academic must be wrapped in it. And it changes the look of the TVET classroom. Now we're gonna look at some of the cultural tools that we hold dear to. And it's less ICT driven. So, and I know very well we go out every year to teach in practice. And one of the times when I went out, I went back to my car and I cried. When I look at the antiquated machines. No other word. The manual tools and equipment. PowerPoint presentation is the most I would see in the class and our students trying their best to infuse what they learn at UTEC, and they don't have the equipment. But this is TVEC that we know. This is business as usual. But where we ought to be is greater infusion of, of ICT. What are those digital learning tools that we should be engaging with our students? What are the ICT systems and devices the simulation exercises, how are we using the low-tech AI? You know, those low-tech AI, even the little, um, what you call those that you build? What is that again? Um, oh, it's a, it's a base of robotics that you just build these, these, these little building that children use. Legos, yes, and then you go to the blocks and then you move up. But it's the integration of digital technologies into teaching, the use of blogs. Wikis for group interaction. What are we doing with those things? 3D printing, the CNC mach machine, the AutoCAD, the, the aut automotive technology. How are we engaging our students? That's the disruption that must take place to our cultural tools. And then we come to the rituals. And these are the practices. The focus is always on output. That's, that's traditional TVET. Output, so what is that? What is that product? And that is still critical, but in the innovative TVET, it's not just output. Critical must be the process. Solving problems and communicating a variety of possible solutions. And this is not new, you know, it's just that we haven't been doing a lot. Because when I was a student at, at CAST, one of the, how we did our thing, we had to go out, we had to find a problem and solve a problem, and the presentation was all to industry experts. That's who marked that paper and at that process. And you build out the prototype and it's assessed. But that's where we need to go now more than ever. It's to find and present knowledge to others as opposed to demonstrate learning through the project pieces, emphasis on the final project, 
and you're requiring the students, of course it requires the students to demonstrate depth and breadth of knowledge, which we still need, and, but it's testing those skills and competences, as I said, through those final projects. Whatever happened in the whole of the year was not as significant as when, that's a holy of time, thank you. I have 10 and I'm moving at top speed. <laughs> but um, the focus here must be on requiring, listen to it now, our TVET students to engage in analysis, synthesis. I just heard the young people talking a lot about skills, skills. Well, here just I have to know how to analyze the scalp and to find out what is happening they have to go further than the, the knowing how to cream my hair, the know, knowing how to do those processes. When my hairline dropping out, do they know what they are to do? Have they been able to, or those kinds of questions. I'm using that because they were just there. When you go to the mechanic, can he discern anything else? We have to sharpen their tools, their analytical tools, the ability to evaluate, to internalize what they are seeing, be able to apply it and find solutions. And those solutions must be to real life problems. And so the question is, where are we in this transition? Some institutions are way ahead of others. Some haven't started. A presentation that was next door there, Bennett, he said we are at industrial revolution between two and three as a country when everybody is four and five it shows that what i'm saying is important because we have not made that transition and i recognize as i looked it over this morning i say i must say a slide that is missing from my my paper which i must go on to say is that i did not look at the challenges but those challenges are critical absence of resources, the, the, the lack of funding. And, that, and somebody, I think um, Bennett was asking for those things, the, the policy directive that demands that government will respond in a way to allow us to make this shift. It takes funds. It takes money. Some people among us have money, but some of us don't have, right? Whoever know that can squeal. So, if, <laughs> so here is my conclusion then, that as TVET responds to its context, disruptions in our cultural practices are inevitable. But as TVET pro professionals adapt to the various disruptions, innovative practices must take root with the potential to ensure the provision of quality TVET that is relevant to its context and accessible to all. Disruption can be challenging, as I just said, not only because of the lack of financing and such, but disruption is disrupting cultural practices, things that this is how we do it. Sometimes we find ourselves pushing back Pushing back, so what you want me to do that for now? I saw me normally do it. Me love me PowerPoint. Oh, it's not about you. We said we are being student-centered. So your PowerPoint is good for you. But we are way past that. Even if you're using the PowerPoint, it should have a little thing. A little thing that connect me to something else. You understand? So, so but, but the reason we resist is because it's rooted in our cultural practices. And so the final point there says, an understanding of how traditional cultural norms influence the implementation of change is, is critical if change in practices are to be lasting and impacting. So what it calls for an acknowledgement, a, a, a really just an assessment of, of myself as a TVET educator. What is my cultural connection to TVET? And what am I resisting in this disruption? And am I willing to shift? And that's my charge to you two for that reflection. Thank you.